Hello everyone and welcome back to Mindspans. My name is Craig and I want to thank you for taking some time with me. I was talking to my son and he watches me do all these videos. He's 12 and he said, I asked him, what would you like me to do a video on? And he said, um, well, maybe you can do one to help someone feel better. And I said, oh, in what way? He said, you know, like when you're sad and you want to feel happy and you don't want to, you don't want to be sad, that would be good. And I said, oh, okay. I said, I could do that. I said, are you, um, how are you feeling? You feeling? Are you feeling sad? Like, he said, yeah, I was feeling sad. And then I felt like I was maybe going to cry and I didn't want, I wouldn't want to feel it. I was like, I didn't know why I was feeling that way. And I was trying to figure out what made me feel sad. And so he's going through this whole thing. And I said, well, let's talk about it a little bit. I said, you know, when you feel sad, it's sort of like when you feel really happy or you feel, remember we were, I was telling the story that we went uh, on a paddleboard uh, to a sandbar uh, when I, we were down in Miami and it was really like this courageous adventure and we were like, you know, tackling the sea and all that kind of stuff and we we're playing out in the sandbar, which is a couple hundred yards out into the ocean. So not very far, but far enough, certainly for him. And, um, and then all of a sudden the lifeguards are, you know, screaming and blowing whistles and there were sharks apparently. <laughs> so there was a massive panic and uh, he got really scared. And I said, so I tell him, you remember that? You remember you like, you felt really courageous, courageous and then you felt really, really scared and, and then everything was fine. And, um, I said, well, that's, but emotions, that's, it's just, that's what emotions are. Like you're really happy and you're really courageous. You're really scared. You're really sad, whatever it is. And in the case of the shark thing, there was a real fear, right? There's a real thing. And that's what's called our bodies are designed. I told them like, you know, our bodies are designed to run and, and, and it creates all these chemicals that give us extra energy. Like we get superpowers when we're faced with something that's life-threatening that's going to kill us maybe and uh not that sharks are going to kill us but i guess they could um and i said you know that's our our bodies are designed like that so unfortunately i told him i said you know the body doesn't know whether it's a real shark or a fake shark or if if it's uh it, or you know someone did something really bad to us or we just think someone did something bad to us that doesn't make a difference because the the once the brain thinks <laughs> that there's a danger even if it's not a real one unfortunately it sets off the system and what does that system do the system starts to make you feel you know you get all this energy and you feel uncomfortable and you, you your breath gets tighter and like all this stuff you know just how you feel not good and sadness is like that too you know, something happens, you start to feel this blah, 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 right? And, um, and I said, it's one of the th ways to, to deal with it, a couple of things. One, I said, look, the first thing is to breathe really deeply. And you breathe really deep in through your nose and it's fun. And you're like, <sighs> and if you could get more in your mouth, as much as you can, hold it for two or three seconds and then breathe out like you're blowing up a balloon and um, do that a few times. And what that does is it tells your body that you're not in danger, that you have the time and, and the capacity to breathe deeply and to hold your breath and to breathe out and, and it stops and slows the process of the chemical releases. And so that in and of itself is going to be very, very helpful. Um, I said, the second thing is think of like these five strong emotions. So you have, you feel sad. So think of when you felt really courageous, like when we went out to the sea and then when you're afraid because of the sharks and then think of a time when you're really happy and come up with something else when you're scared and come up with like these stories 
and then replay the story in your head but you're like you're watching a movie and go very quickly so you go you do the shark story you do the paddling story you do a super happy time story like when we were skiing and you do a really the sad story and you keep going like that back and around and around and you start to move away from the actual feeling and you're just watching it pass by which is sort of what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to achieve of course we're going to feel stuff but to uh, to realize that these are these are clouds that are passing through us um, and that we shouldn't be empowering them and and engaging them and attaching to them and which is what we do and I said the other thing is when you th think like a bully or something if you you know are always engaging the bully and afraid of the bully then that person gets stronger because they feel like they have control um, so you don't want to provide energy to the equation so if you feel a certain way if you start either trying to push it away which is an energetic force or you're trying to think about it too much that's an energetic force and so you're now creating form out of the formless <laughs> and you're creating a powerful form that never existed and so that's really important too is to just not think about it like that um, try to move distance from it and you could think if I told them that you should think of like clouds you know clouds there's puffy white clouds there's gray clouds and then there's those scary lightning clouds and and but they go and they do their thing and they come by and and you watch them you know and they all are interesting and they can be very interesting sadness what does it really feel like happiness what does it really feel like? what is it what is the feeling they tend to be sort of actually similar in some respects different sides of a coin maybe but um, but what you know and look at it from that perspective what does that feeling feel like and it'll go and it and it passed by and and you can be amused by your humanity <laughs> by the fact that you feel sad and you can laugh at yourself that you are jealous I think it, someone said this uh, I read I'm so bad at this. I really have to do a better job. When I when I see something I like, I gotta write the name down so I can give them credit. And I so I'm gonna really do a better job at that. So whoever came up with this, if you see this, I'm sorry, because um, it certainly did not come from me. And they said that um, in a sense you're punishing yourself. So when you feel like bad, like let's say someone says something or you think someone said something, often. We just think something happened, didn't actually happen, or it wasn't meant to happen that way. But anyway, so something happens and then we feel bad, right? We feel sad, or we feel bad, we feel angry, you know, all this negative stuff. And think about that, like what they said is that it's like punishing yourself for what someone else may have done to you. So not only do you feel bad, but you're doubly feeling punishing yourself so it's the oddest thing so if you think of it from that perspective then you can start to also again it, it you can separate yourself from from the mind process another way to look at it uh, this is another uh, woman um, who who said it in a way that was very I thought humorous is, is like we're fish and, and emotions are like dangling bait. <laughs> and the mind, a, a good fish will just swim around with the mind, grabs the bait, tries to run away with it, and uh, gets caught and then reeled in. And so that is the mind engaging the emotion in a way that, not good for the fish. So. I always makes me laugh thinking about that <laughs> running around with emotional baits running around waiting for us um, so yeah so the point of all this is is how do we strike this balance of objectivity and 
I think that when you talk about, when I'm talking with people I'm working with about this objectivity or being quiet or all these things, and uh, and they sort of associate it with with uh, non participation or passiveness or um, loneliness or something like that. That's how they think about it because it's like these are all their constructs they're, they're, that they've surrounded themselves by and, and their emotional baggage. And so, what do I do if I don't have all that stuff? I'm going to be alone and empty. <laughs> but it, I tell them, and I tell this, I say this all the time. It's it's the opposite. It is such the opposite, actually. You know, being really quiet and being more the observer, allowing your, the true self, capital self, to to rise, is actually incredibly connected and it's incredibly integrated and involved, and 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 you you enjoy and and then participate in all the things that are human, um, but you do it in a way that that where you're not, where the mind doesn't grab it. And wrangle it and turn it into some beast that turns and wrangles you so so what am I I'm always about elevating so this is a great great thing to do and and for my son I hope uh, that this helps uh, hopefully I helped you through that and that it'll be helpful and um, I wish everyone an absolutely amazing amazing day and uh, definitely subscribe to the channel, like it, share it, and you can follow me on Instagram. I, I write more frequently there and post lots of cool pictures of my existence. And um, I wish everyone a, just a phenomenal, phenomenal day. So thank you for taking some time with me. Appreciate it.